with yours truly, Jeannie Ortega, right here in the heart of New York City. <laughs> it's my hometown, so you know I'm biased. Uh, I am just so excited to be here today. It is an honor to be your host. I want to take this time to give thanks to Matt and Lori Crouch and Sammy Rodriguez. Thank you for giving us an opportunity to boast on our God. You know, with this show, it's my heart to give others, uh, to highlight others and give them an opportunity to talk about their lives and their ministries and how God is using them, whether it's in music or movies or media, for the kingdom of God. The Bible says that every good and perfect gift comes from God, but it also says that God has given each and every one of us a gift to share with each other as good stewards of his amazing grace. So it is my honor to sit here and introduce you to people that are doing just that. My guest today is a Bronx native. He is an incredible producer and now artist. If you know hip hop, if you know Reach Records, then you know his music. His producer turned artist recently with his new release, we Belong, it's an album that's now available everywhere. And it's his, it's his heart to really share with you what God is doing. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to my guest, Gavi. Welcome. <laughs> What's up? It is so good to sit here and talk to you about what God is doing. Your life yeah. in the past year and change has completely changed. It has a lot. So tell us a little bit about it because I talked about Reach Records, I talked about if they know the, the music of Reach Records, they definitely know your music. Some people yeah. don't even know what that means. Tell us a little bit about your background and where you are now. Yeah, so um, I'm a music producer uh, and also I'm an artist now on Reach Records. And kind of the story of me connecting with Reach Records was just me being a young kid in love with music production. Um, and I, so it's a funny story. There's three concerts that I went to uh, of Lecrae yeah. when uh, he was performing back early in like 2006 time. And you guys know who Lecrae is, you know? <laughs> Lecrae, yeah, the guy. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I was just in awe of this song that he had just released called Jesus Music at that time. And I'm producing locally in South Florida at that time. And uh, you know, I'm just running after my dreams. So I went to three concerts of his and I had CDs with me and I went to the backstage, I would sneak behind and I'll get my CDs to him. And by the third concert, um, he like grabbed me and he was like, every time you give me a CD, I've been trying to get in contact with you because you never leave your contact information on the CD. <laughs> you forgot that really important I part. I forgot that important <laughs> part. I was so excited as a kid that I was like, man, I just got to get the CD to show him I can produce and make wow. beats. Uh, but yeah, by the third time, uh, we got in contact uh, a lot more deeper and he flew me out to Memphis, Tennessee, where they were located at that time, Reach Records. And uh, that started a whole uh, career for me where I just recorded, uh, I did eight songs for Lecrae on Rebel wow. at th that year. Yeah. Trip Lee, I did like nine songs on his album, 2020, then Tadashi, I did work on his album. So that year really like shaped and molded my career. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm thinking as you say that? So many people you watch on TV where it's always the guy giving the demo and, and, and then they throw yeah. the demo out. Yeah. But like in this situation, you gave Lecrae your demo over and over and yeah. look what look what it turned out to be. It's incredible. Yeah, it's a lot harder now because people don't really listen to CDs as much. That's true. Um, <laughs> give but, them a flash drive. But yeah, flash drive. <laughs> but it definitely was a challenge back then and it was a hustle. Um, but yeah, it, it started my career and I've been with Reach Records ever since. So I was about how 16 long, years old. How long old. has it been? It's been over 10 years. Wow. Yeah. That's like a lifetime. You guys are family, for sure. Oh, 100%. So it made sense. So let's talk about the transition, though, because, you know, I've always loved your beats. I remember we met years ago with Triple. Yeah. 
and he was playing his CD and it was banging. I was like, yes, good music, yeah. you know, that people can people can listen to and also get a great message from. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, now you have your own record. Um, first, I yeah. want to say this. Shout out to a Latino and Reach Records. Come on, come on. <laughs> From El Salvadorian and Dominican descent. Yes. That is just, I, you know, I'm very proud about that. I'm very proud about that Amen. too. Amen, <laughs> that's such a blessing. And, um, you know, but you're not a hip hop artist though. And then all the dudes in Reach Records yeah. are, they rap. They do. You do something else. I am the anomaly of the group. <laughs> you are the anomaly. <laughs> Sorry, Lecrae. Yeah. <laughs> the true anomaly. Yeah. <laughs> so tell us about that and kind of, so We Belong is the album, mm -hmm. and it is pop EDM. Is yep. it? Would you describe it any other way? So it's pop EDM with a lot of uh, inspiration of still trap music like hip hop, uh, a lot of tropical. You even have a lot of stuff from my Latin roots. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, there's a lot of ballads. There's a lot of worship music inside it. Mm -hmm. So I definitely wanted to make a diverse um, a sound sonically for mm -hmm. people to enjoy so that anybody can enjoy. Abuelita, you know, sister, neighbor. So for people who don't think you could have worship music that sounds like that turned up, you know, where, there's, where it's exciting. Yeah. And um, what do you say? I just think music is a beautiful thing. Music is like the universal language of just love. You know, everybody can accept that. So uh, I always wanted to create music that could just go globally, uh, reach any boundary, and that they could hear the message of God through it. So, Amen. yeah. You know, what I really love about We Belong is the, the title. You want people to yeah. come together. And yeah. I know you tell a story about a time where you went to church and it became reality to you that yeah, you yeah. want people to belong. I'd love for you to share that. Yeah, so I grew up in a church-going family. My dad was a pastor. Um, I was, you know, that bad little kid because I was a PK. PK. <laughs> you know, I would just go in the back of the church and eat all the communion crackers and the what? juice. And it was bad. I was, I was ADD. Like, I just needed to touch everything. You're an artist. That's why. <laughs> you know? So then um, through that background story, I... You know, because I just didn't know what to do all the time. You, you're, you're there at church 24/7. Um, yeah. I would just hit the drums and hit the the keys and all the time, and that's how I kind of fell in love with music. And then I would start playing uh, with the church growing up. At nine years old, I got my own keyboard at the house, wow. so playing worship. My mom would lead worship. Um, it was funny. Last night I was driving through New York, uh, and I got to see my old church oh, here in New York wow. too. So it felt amazing to see it. Um, but yeah, what was the question again? <laughs> well, the question You really, see, that my yeah, mind runs that's okay. everywhere. I, well, I love that you're telling us your story because yeah. you do have an incredible story, being a pastor's kid. Yeah. And then I, I can come back to the other question, but really what I want to know now, that since we're talking about your testimony, you were a PK, but you didn't always stay saved. Like, you know how people right. think, yes. okay, I grew up in the church, so I'm saved and I'm yeah. good, but yeah. you have your own journey to actually coming to this now. You're a man of God. Yeah. Um, tell us about that, and then we'll talk about your experience with uh, church and how you want people to belong. Yep, perfect. So, um, grew up in an amazing church-going family. Music was my life. You couldn't take me away from it. Um, but I never really understood. Uh, I didn't let faith become my own yet. It was more of like my parents just telling me about the Bible all the time. And I'd be like, okay, mom, okay, <laughs> dad. Um, but it took until high school where I joined... Uh, uh, a high school ministry, and I, I still remember like it was yesterday, Pastor John, he was right at the front, and he said, John 3.16, like I never heard it before. You know, wow. you grow up hearing that famous verse your yeah. whole entire life if you grow up in church. Um, and even outside of church, a lot of people just know that verse. And um, yeah, it just hit me so hard where I was like, I want to know more. And at that church, I was able to learn what it is to be discipled, mm -hmm. how to study your Bible, uh, who Paul was really, you know, I just... I was always hearing this name, Paul, who's Paul, you know? Wow. So it was really cool. High school really changed my life, uh, being at the high school ministry. I believe in high school ministry a lot. Okay, that's um, cool. And then when I graduated, mm -hmm. I was going to a missionary's trip to Mexico, uh, and that was an amazing experience. But when I came back, my parents, uh, they had told me that they were getting a divorce. Wow. Yeah, so it was like... Everything's beautiful, and then how do you get from something so beautiful, and then, but, wait, what's going wow. on? We're getting, the family splitting up? And if anybody's ever been through a divorce, what, what happens is, uh, you know, holidays happen, and you really feel it there, because then you're like, am I going to mom's house? Am I going to dad's house? Wow. So it just, uh, it, from 18 to like 22, 
it was a moment where um, I kind of rebelled and. So um, do you blame God in that situation? Yeah, at that time, I was like, God, how could you? Mm. You know, uh, at that time, I was like, yeah, you know what? I'm just going to go out. I'm going to go clubbing all the time, sleep around with girls all the time, mm. find alcohol to be my medicine all the and time. And you never, you were never like that before, right? I wasn't. So I was a saint. <laughs> here's this, here's this yes. saved kid, pastor's yeah. kid, yeah. who now you gone wild. Yeah, and I, I, so I really believe from 18 to like 25 as a young man, guys are really trying to figure out what it is to be a man because mm. now you're out and you have so much pressure, you know, mom's on your back, like go to college or what are you gonna do as a career? And you're just thinking about your whole entire life. So at that moment, I was like, I'm gonna search my own identity the way I want to mm -hmm. in a bad way. Um, and yeah, I hit rock bottom around 22 mm -hmm. where uh, it all caught up to me. Wow. And this is why I tell a, a lot of people that connects with the album, we were designed to worship Mm. something that's, yeah, right that's so true and until you find out what that something is uh it's gonna be a life-changing moment right and you're filling it with everything until you find out the true thing you were designed to exactly to worship yeah so for me i'm trying to worship alcohol i'm trying to worship you know sleeping around with girls i'm thinking that's gonna fulfill me but in actuality it never did i was just keep i kept on looking for it um, and then I realized at the moment I was just crying at my bed. It, I have a song called Late Nights. It's was, basically about that. Yeah, and if you see the video, you'll see yeah. the journey. I love it. You, you yeah. can see you going in the dark areas yeah. and, and not being fulfilled. And you were never meant mm -hmm. to be there, you know? Right, right. It's, yeah. So, yeah, that, that moment I hit rock bottom and I was just like, God, I know your truth. I grew up knowing the truth, so I need to run full force towards you. and. I never looked back ever since. Amen. Yeah, and now I'm married. I have a, yes. I've been married for three years. I have a beautiful little one-year-old. Oh. Uh, she's about to be two, actually. Wow. Yeah, so oh my it's, gosh. it's been awesome. So now with We Belong, right? Right. Because you're married. You've had your experience where you were in God, walked away from God, then came back to God. Yeah. And your heart now is to make everyone feel like they belong. Yes. Um, like they're not an outcast to God, you know, because yeah. I know as Christians, sometimes we're like, oh, you know, I'm so saved, yeah. you know, so forget you, you sinner. You know, we can kind of, even if we're not acting that way no. or thinking that way, people can get that perception. Yeah. But We Belong was not made for that, right? Yeah, yeah. So tell us a little bit about, you You know, you talked about going to a church and you, you, you saw someone, yeah. you know, that people could make feel that way and it yeah. gave you the inspiration to... So it all connects to like my, my testimony and then also my desires that I have with this album. So I, I've always said this in interviews where when I go to my shows and I'm performing and you got to see it, it's just a sea of just diversity, so yeah. many backgrounds, so many cultures. Um, and that's what I, I view heaven as. I want mm -hmm. people to experience the music and understand one day we're going to all go to heaven. It's going to be a sea of just different backgrounds, different stories and all, each one of them uh, belonged in the great picture of God. Yeah. Um, and it brings me to this uh, story in the book of John, uh, the Samaritan woman. I always get to say is at concerts, which I love. It's, it really rocked me. And it's actually hit me more now as the album's been coming out. It's, so there's this woman, she's out of well, and Jesus is passing through a town. I'm gonna say it quick too. No, come on. <laughs> so Jesus passing through the town and he asked for water from her. And then uh, she kind of looks at him like shocked and she says, you don't even have a bucket for your water. And what I love about this is when Jesus approached her, he already knew his whole scheme and, and the storyline, what was about to happen. He's like, I'm actually, I'm the living water. Basically come to me and you'll thirst no more. And throughout this whole conversation, she's just rocked by this message. And he tells her to go tell her whole city what just happened. Mm -hmm. uh, but basically he says, go tell your husband first. Mm -hmm. and when he tells her to go do that, uh, she goes, I don't have a husband. What do you mean? And he's like, you know what? You're right. And he does it again. He's, he's given another response and he's like, actually, you have five. You've been messing around. And this woman's been sleeping around with five wow. other dudes. Wow. And she's just caught in her sin. And she's just like, how do you even know what? And again, he tells her to go send this message and go tell what's happening. And through that, she's able to change a whole city, uh, and they all changed. But here's a real cool story about this. So there's three things that I love, which is, one, 
when Jesus approached her, right, uh, Samaritans and Jews did not connect mm -hmm. at that time, yep. right? Culturally, it was just not right for them to even yeah. talk, nothing. And we can tie that into today where there's a lot of separate, you know, that's where you, you know go going. That's where you go. All right, come going. on, preacher. Bring it. So culturally, <laughs> they couldn't even talk. Then second, this was a, J Jesus was considered like a rabbi, and this is a woman, mm. right? Mm -hmm. So for her to even go send a message like this or the communication there, that's another point where I was like, what? So then three, the other thing is he called her out on her own sin, but yet he still chose her to go send this great message. Yeah. And uh, that's what the whole album is basically about, what I wanted to do, where it's, it doesn't amount, matter about one, uh, if you feel valuable to do anything, if, if you're worthy enough. Uh, culturally, you know, there's no boundaries that God sees in you. And then your sin, three, it, there's nothing that's gonna stop Jesus from approaching you and saying that you're able to do this. And that's what I felt when I was 18 to 22, I, I just felt like I was not worthy enough to even be praying or anything. You know those moments yeah. where you just feel like sin is overcoming you? Yeah. But Jesus already died on the cross for those sins, mm -hmm. and there's a greater picture that God wants you to be part of. Yeah. Uh, so I really want people to feel like they belong in this great picture of God. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, that story's just been rocking me. So bring us back to that moment where here you were engulfed with sin, yeah. But you were able to cry out to God because this is what happens. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people can't get from point A to point B. Like they're they know God is is good and they know mm -hmm. that He can save them and that He would forgive them, but they can't get themselves to that point where they're just like, really, Lord. You know, you said that there's no sin too great, right? That He can't overcome. So how do you advise? You know, you're a young man, mm -hmm. and I, I think it's you know it can be harder for men. You know, yeah. how do you advise men to kind of just really let go and humble themselves and really get to that point? And then what do they do next? Where do they go then? You know, yeah. once they say, okay, I accept this and I'm going to change and I'm going to start living for God, now what? Yeah, I think every story is unique. Mm -hmm. There's different layers of whatever sin it might be or whatever situation it is in life that they're going through. Um, but I always direct it back to church. Uh, I believe in a body of mm. a community of people that could surround you and pray for you and just talk through things, not literally like shove uh, teachings, more of just loving upon people. If you look at the way Jesus acted, he was always loving people and not just, um, you know, just going down their throat. Yeah, he wasn't like, bashing them yeah. <laughs> with the word. So I, I strongly believe in people loving upon people mm -hmm. um, and then through that, finding the message of Jesus. Yeah, yeah. awesome. So tell us now what's going on. We Belong is out. You've been touring. You yeah. just told me some amazing stuff backstage about yeah. the rest of your schedule. So tell yeah. us what's going on. This new uh, artist extraordinaire. Yeah. <laughs> so right now it's, it's still hitting me where last time when we talked, uh, it's, it's overwhelming. So, you know, being a music producer, you're behind closed doors all the time. You're just in the studio producing. And now I'm, you know, doing interviews and doing shows. Uh, you know, I was just in, um, recently I was in Tennessee and I had to do a show out there and we had a long line for me and greet. And what happens is it's very, like, it takes a lot on your body because yeah. you have to smile the whole time. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> Did you enjoy it today? Yeah. Awesome. And you just performed the whole yes, set. Yes, yes. So it's nonstop. So I'm learning a lot of things of, you know, how to communicate to people, um, how to physically, you know, because my shows, I'm jumping throughout the whole time. <laughs> Stay <So>, fit. <laughs> yes, I have to try and eat better now, get more rest uh, if I can. So my schedule is everywhere too. Um, but yeah, I'm going on tour. I have a, from, from like, yeah, the rest of the year, I'm just doing a lot of shows yeah. nonstop. So it's bittersweet. Mm -hmm. It's awesome I get to do all these shows, my album's out, but then I'm away from my family all the time mm. now. So that's yeah. the hardest part ever. Yeah, and you yeah. guys are still newlyweds in a sense. It's three years. Yeah, three and years have a new. Precious yeah. little baby. Mm. So how do you balance that? Still trying to figure it out. Mm. Yeah. Facetime a lot. A lot of Facetime, <laughs> um, and a lot of mo just being intentional. Whenever I'm home, mm. I'm home. So I kind of disconnect myself from the f the phone. I tell my boys, hey. Hmm. I'll set a day for you that's guys, good. you know? That's good. You're prioritizing. But yeah, you, yeah. you know, that's your first ministry as a man of God. Definitely. Um, so the show's called In The Mix. Yeah. You know, the show's called In The Mix. And how, you know, how would you say during this journey now with We Belong, 
it, are you able to really just mix what God has called you to do as a creative person and yeah. being, you know, somebody who's like in, going out into all the world and, and preaching the truth to God? Yeah. How would you say, if you gave me a short answer with that? What's really cool is me being Latino mm -hmm. uh, has opened up so many doors wow. with that. So last year I was able to go to Guatemala and perform at this huge EDM festival that they have for Christians. It was more An than 10. An EDM festival in Guatemala? I know. I never even heard of that. It's crazy. <laughs> you don't know that? <laughs> I, I wouldn't even, yeah. And there was more than 10,000 people there. I got to perform and it was wild. It was one of the best experiences. But through that, it's just been opening up more experience, uh, more opportunities uh, and even people hearing stuff like in my music where there's like uh, Hispanic music. I have a song called Cumbia. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's just, it's really cool to see how me being Latino can actually reach more in the world. Wow. You know, there's a lot of Latin countries I out there. I love that. I so love that. It's cool to be that voice right now for a landmark and also in yeah. the United States. And, and you know what's great too is that you don't always, you don't only perform, you also share your testimony. Yeah. You know, and, and I think with young people, sometimes a lot of people are dancing in the world and also want to dance with Jesus. But yeah. I think when they hear your story about coming to God in spite of, you know, growing up in the church, then having something devastating mm -hmm. happening, backsliding, and then coming back to God, yeah. um, they're, they're able to look at another young man, you know, or if, or if it's a, uh, or women. We love to see men be vulnerable. Mm. And if you can do it, yeah. And they can do it. Yeah, so I'm yeah. so grateful that you, you know, you're here kicking it with us and just really talking about what God is doing. Yeah, definitely. We Belong is doing amazing. You're dropping videos all the time. I know. And um, I just love that people are embracing what you're doing. It's from a Latino, from this generation. Yeah. And I love that you're also on one of um, the, the biggest hip-hop labels, for sure, in the Christian community. Yeah, yeah. Reach Records. So, you know, for sure, you guys want to get in touch with Gavi, you know where to go. ReachRecords.com, and you have a website, I'm sure, as well. Yeah, Gavi.com. You can get me on my Twitter, Instagram, Gavi. Yep. It's all G-A-W-V-I. Yes, and if you want to party <laughs> and still feel great afterwards and don't feel guilty, make sure you jam out to Gavi's music. Yeah. So what I love is this part right Ooh. here, is that after all this, we get to hear something from Gavi. So here is his single, Rock and roll. <laughs> Faces. They 
They say it's real, it's just faded. Right around Sunset Boulevard. To have it all, would you sell your soul? All I know is I wouldn't mind. I wouldn't mind. Say it, Red, don't you fall for more? Take the L, walk away for the mall. Stay in the game, lose your life, no control. Just to be a slave. Rock, 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 rock and roll. Lights and smoke. Rock and roll, what a show. What a show. Don't you move, move. Rock and roll. Lights and smoke. Rock and roll, what a show. What a show. Don't you move, move. Rock and roll. Don't you fall for me? You wanna? 